Hey everyone, Jordan here from the Protocase team. In today's Proto Tech Tip, we're going to cover adding radii and chamfers to the model of your CNC machine part. We're here to make the parts you need so you can keep on prototyping and problem solving. When it comes to CNC machining specifically, you can depend on Protocase to make your machine parts quickly to excellent quality, with no minimum order, ever. We've devoted several of our Prototech Tip videos to specific CNC topics, including the basics of CNC machining, CNC corner radius, and tips for cutting cost, and making minor modifications. I recommend checking out the full playlist of CNC machining Prototech Tips that we've linked below, as they've got some really useful information. For today's Prototech tip, I'm specifically going to focus on best practices for adding radii and chamfers to your, the model of your CNC machine part. Radii and chamfers serve many purposes in a CNC machine part design. Sometimes they are used as a defined edge break, other times chamfers and edge radii create necessary geometry or clearances for fitment of mating parts. In some cases, the way chamfers and radii are added to your model can create unfavorable machining tool paths or require additional machining time. I'm going to walk you through how to make more favorable designs using SOLIDWORKS. Let's start with the basics. I've got a simple rectangular post. We'll be applying chamfers and radii to show how the geometries change. In the first example, we have the simplest version of this. All square external corners have 90 degree edges at which the chamfers or radii meet. Our chamfer tooling or edge round tooling can follow the outside of the path along the square profile without any issue. But what if you wanted to apply this to the sides and top face? Well, depending on how you apply your features in SOLIDWORKS, you could end up with different results. Here we can create the outer geometry when profiling out our main shape. It is then an easy path to follow for our chamfer tool, creating the optimal machining path for your part. Now let's walk through two other ways to create these features in SOLIDWORKS that will create less optimal machining strategies. In scenario one, we're adding in chamfers in the reverse order, which is going to require an additional path to clean up the side edges after chamfering the top face or using a 5-axis movement with your chamfer tool. Since the toolpath is now discontinuous, it will take the machine longer to complete these movements. Then there's scenario 2, where we are adding in the chamfers as one select doll feature. Doing this will require a cleanup on the corners using 5-axis movement due to the toolpath the tooling must take. The 5-axis toolpath requires another tool to be used, increasing overall part manufacturing time. In both of these scenarios, we've created additional machining due to the way we've created our feature within SOLIDWORKS. Now we can look at applying a radius to both the top, face, and sides. Radii can give similar outcomes, while the order of application does not create various geometries, the size of the radius applied can give unfavorable machining operations that will increase the time and therefore cost. When the radius along the side walls is greater than or equal to the radius of the top face, it creates a smooth path for our edge rounding tool to follow. When the side radius is smaller than the radius on the top face, it creates additional machining as it is no longer achievable geometry using our edge rounding tool. Instead, a ball nose end mill is required to contour the surface of the part, a much more lengthy process. Another instance you need to consider with adding chamfers is when the tool path ends at a perpendicular wall. The circular tool will not fit to create a sharp internal corner. Thus, this shape is only possible with additional tools to create the tool path. Adding the radius to the corner allows the chamfering tool to trace a path in its plane of travel, creating the proper shape. Likewise, if the edges of the part have edge radii, these same corners must have a radius that matches the radius size of the edge radii tool being used. They must also be planar radii, essentially being able to be traced in a plane. Otherwise, we will create a blended radius, which will have to be machined using a contouring cycle. In SOLIDWORKS, when we create the vertical radii prior to the corner radii, we create blended corners and therefore longer machining time. Alternatively, if we create the edge radii simultaneously in SOLIDWORKS, the radius that is created in the vertical corners matches both the tooling radius and is planar. Finally, let's cover modeling using radii along the floor of a pocket. We can create various geometries depending on both the corner radius and the floor radius. The best practice is to ensure the floor radii is at least one tool size smaller than the radius of the corner in the pocket. For more information on tool sizes that are available stocked in house, check out the resource section on our website. By selecting a bottom floor radius equal to the corner radius, additional machining operations are required to clean up the small bit of material left in the corner of the part, as shown in the video as a blue bump. Instead, if we choose a floor radii that is less than the corner radii, 
the tool creating the floor radius can follow a path easily and not create any additional cleanup passes with the tool. As you can see, no blue bump in this example with the smaller floor radius. In the end, there are many ways to model your necessary geometry, and we're here to assess your parts and determine how they can be created. My goal with this Prototech tip is to provide some guidance on the best practices for creating designs with the most efficient machining strategies in mind. Of course, our engineering team can help you make these minor modifications at the design approval stage and help you optimize your cost savings. As always, if you require any of our assistance from our design team to make changes to your models, let us know. We are always here to assist through both the quoting and designing stages of your order. I hope you found this information helpful. Learn more about our CNC capabilities on our website. If you've got a design that you'd like assessed and quoted, contact us. We're here to make your life as easy as possible so you can focus on your projects and meet your critical deadlines. Thank you for watching our Prototech Tip. We'll be back next week with another one.